my name is Elijah Galmore-Ripple, and this summer I continued my research with the Janda Lab. Today, I'll be presenting on my project about overexpression of three insect herbivore resistance genes in Ceteria viridis and the effects on Spodoptera frugiperda herbivory. So this is an ongoing project that I will continue into the fall semester with Dr. Richter and Dr. Jander, our expert MC who just came to check on me. Thank you very much for that as well. All right, so. Okay, this is All right, so what's for Dr. Frigiperido? It's not echo, let me mute this one. So what's Spodoptera frugiperido? Spodoptera frugiperido, more commonly known as the fall armyworm, is a notorious agricultural pest. This moth larva has been chosen for the project because, it's a, because it causes major economic losses for crops, including but not limited to rice, cabbage, tomato, and most notably, maize across the southern United States. Okay, so what's Ceteria viridis? Ceteria viridis, more commonly known by several names such as green foxtail, green millet, and green bristle grass, is a temperate pervasive grass that, which many people would consider just another weed. You're probably, you probably were just a few meters away from some while you were outside eating lunch without even realizing that. Um, our project uses Ceteria because it's an excellent model for C4 photosynthetic grasses like maize and sugarcane. When compared to other grasses, Ceteria viridis has a well-sequenced genome that is easier to modify, for example, through gene overexpressions as done in this project. So the project I'm working on started off as Dr. Madia Mirze's research on gene regulation involved in Ceteria herbivory defense. Using RNA-seq to assess RNA expression levels, she obtained a pairwise, the pairwise comparison results shown here. And the majority of Ceteria viridis gene expression was downregulated as indicated by the red dots in response to fall armyworm herbivory. This contrast results showing primarily upregulation as the green dots for methyl jasminate treatment. Methyl jasminate is a molecule that stimulates plants herbivory and stress response. So in essence, the disparity between gene regulation shown for the feeding of fall armyworms versus the methyl jasminate sprain likely means that the fall armyworm spit somehow represses ceteria genes, which may provide plants resistance to their feeding, hence allowing the fall armyworms to eat more. My project investigates three of these genes that have been downregulated, that have downregulated expression, namely chitinase, pathogenesis related protein, bit six family, which I'll just call pathogenesis related protein from here on in, and thionine. So, chitinase. So, why chitinase? Chitinase was chosen as a candidate gene because it was discovered to be downregulated post fall armyworm feeding but also because it's an enzyme that can degrade chitin that insect cuticles and exoskeletons are composed of. By breaking the glycosidic bonds shown here between chitin, within chitin, it reduces the structural integrity of chitin, and it would arguably make Ceteria less appetizing to the insect herbivores. I personally prefer eating things which don't degrade my mouth parts, but I'm sure the insects hopefully share this preference. All right, so why thionine? Thionine was also downregulated post fall armyworm feeding. Unlike chitinase, this is a cysteine rich pathogenesis related protein and is more generally cytotoxic and has antimicrobial properties. And it was selected based on its capacity to disrupt cell membranes. So this could disrupt not necessarily just the membranes of insects such as fall armyworms, but just animal cells in general. 
So pathogenesis related protein, why was this chosen? Again, it was downregulated in a similar fashion, post fall army worm feeding. However, as the name suggests, it's related to thionine, but the effects on insects may be similar to thionine, but are heavily misunderstood or unknown at this point in time. One thing which is known about this protein, which is interesting, is that it's one of the best known plant allergens for humans. All right, so once the candidate genes were identified by Dr. Madia Mirza's work, a gateway system was used to clone genes into P donor and subsequently panic 10A here at vectors. And this was done so that we could introduce these transgenes in Soteria. Dr. Van X lab transformed Soteria lines, which I started working with. We will also use green fluorescent protein transgenic plants as a transgenic control. Since GFP is known to provide no herbivory defense, this control will demonstrate that this is not just any and every transgene insertion that can increase insect herbivory resistance of Soteria, but rather that any increased resistance would be coming from the specific candidate genes we've chosen to include. Hypothetically, so this would be either chitinase, thionin, or pathogenesis related protein. Okay, so project objectives. So from the candidate transgenes introduced, effective overexpression means increased RNA levels, and we assume this means increased protein translated from that RNA. Hence, we are measuring the RNA or transcript level to determine if these genes are overexpressed. Once we confirm the overexpression, the next objective is to use comparative bioassays to investigate if this overexpression of these candidate genes provides Ceteria plants with some resistance to fall armyworm herbivory. All right, so what do we expect? It was expected that all three candidate genes would be effectively overexpressed in their respective Ceteria lines. Additionally, it was also expected that there would that the comparative bioassays would display less herbivory in lines with candidate gene overexpressions, and therefore, on the opposite side of the same coin, we also expect more herbivory in the wild type and GFP transgenic lines that act as controls. All right. So, what did I do for my procedure? So first off, I started with germinating the seeds for different soteria lines. Then leaves from the respective lines were harvested, first for DNA isolation and amplification via PCR polymerase chain reaction. The PCR product was then loaded into a gel and ran so that we could eventually extract these pieces, these bands from the gel once they seem to be the appropriate size of the gene and send them for sequencing at the Biotechnology Resource Center. Once we received the sequences back from the Biotechnology Resource Center, we used Multiline to investigate whether or not these sequences matched up with our reference sequences. So we did all these steps dealing with the DNA to confirm that one, it's integrated into the Soteria genome, and two, to ensure that the integrated DNA has the correct sequence. Once the candidate gene expressions were confirmed, we harvested new leaves for RNA isolation, cDNA synthesis, and the cDNA that was synthesized from that RNA isolate was used for quantitative real-time PCR, qPCR for short. qPCR allows us to compare the levels of expression among the various Ceteria lines, so we could know which lines candidate gene expression was higher. Finally, Selecting the plants with the greatest overexpression of candidate genes, fall armyworm bioassays were and will continue to be conducted. So far, we've conducted a pre experimental bioassay. All right, so what do we have here? So, this is the start of the results. So, the candidate genes that were introduced into the Soteria lines were PCR amplified using forward and reverse primers universal to the Panic 10A vector. So, this entire insert here was integrated into the Soteria genome. Whether it's one time, two times, three times, we are not unsure of that, but we ran all of these 
all of these tests, all of this procedure with relation to the DNA to ensure that this is successfully integrated and to ensure that the sequence match. So with a forward primer that binds close to the ubiquitin promoter and a reverse primer, which binds close to the v 5 terminator, the only difference between the PCR amplifications is this candidate gene in between. So where in this case, in the figure, is pathogenesis-related protein, whereas it could also be thionine or chitinase as well. So we also, as I said before, we got the sequence and the genomic DNA isolated from the Soteria lines match a reference sequence for all candidate genes. As seen with this beautiful red right here and the consensus being completely red as well, there was a 100% match for all of these, which was awesome. Now, qPCR time. So all three candidate genes were overexpressed as shown in blue. That were over, all three candidate genes were overexpressed, displayed in blue, and they displayed higher relative quantities than the wild type average displayed in red. So using these results, we selected the highlighted lines, so the ones with the little yellow boxes around them, for pre-experimental bioassays. So what's next for the project? As it says there, more dancing caterpillars, but also more bioassays. So, so far we only have conducted pre-experimental bioassays with small sample sizes for soteria lines and fall army worms. So during the fall semester, I'll be conducting herbivory bioassays with more caterpillars and biological replicates for the respective soteria lines. I will also include GFP transgenic plants as a transgenic control alongside the wild type control for the reason which I previously mentioned, to ensure that we show that it's not any arbitrary transgenic insertion, which confers to this insect herbivory resistance. Okay, so first off, with the acknowledgements, I need to thank and give a classic Jamaican big up to all current and former members of the Janda Lab who have helped my project or have just been great to work around thus far. This big up and thanks especially goes out to Dr. George Jando and Dr. Annette Richter. Um, as the final presenter, despite all of these issues, all these technical difficulties with that, which I had, I think it's safe to say on behalf of every participant in the undergraduate and high school internships, I would like to thank the staff and faculty here at BTI, the interns themselves, Cornell University, NSF, oh, NSF, the USDA, who have all contributed to making this experience possible. Thank you for listening, but please redirect all your applause to show appreciation for our fellow interns, mentors, faculty and staff, people from BTI IT, Delaney, Olivia, Dr. Janda, and everyone else who played a part in making this symposium and internship possible and enjoyable for us all. So thank you. <laughs>